Next topic here, sports medicine. Really quick. Dr. Cole, it's amazing. We always talk about the advances in medicine and what you guys are doing over at Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. Um, what about uh, preventing the overuse of opioids uh, following surgery? Well, That's Steve, you know, key, it's right? something. It's obviously it's something you see. It's a it's a political issue. It's an enormous public health issue. Uh, the opioid crisis has been one of our greatest challenges over the last ten years, and uh, specifically as it relates to orthopedic conditions. You know, we have a primary responsibility when it relates to either managing patients who come in who are on opioids, or even more importantly, not creating a problem that didn't exist before, especially if they need surgery uh, to manage some of the most difficult problems. Let's bring in Dr. Kern Singh. He is an orthopedic, minimally invasive spine surgeon from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. Dr. Singh, thanks for joining us here on Sports Medicine Weekly. Uh, First question, what is the opioid crisis in America and particularly uh, spine surgery? Well, thank you guys for having me on. Uh, It's a big topic. I mean, uh, what people don't realize is that uh, the new statistics say that one in three patients start with uh, a narcotic medication afterwards, after surgery, after some pain that they may be experiencing, and then they can end up uh, becoming either drug dependent or heroin dependent. Wow. What What are some of the things that you're doing? I know you are clearly in our group at Midwest Orthopedics, a leader in minimally invasive spine surgery. It's still surgery. You know, we've uh, been paying a lot of attention to try to find uh, alternatives to narcotics because that can set the stage for future narcotic use. So how do you do it now? What's the best way to manage surgical pain uh, to also, you know, lead to an uneventful recovery? So I think that, you know, I think we've come a long way in understanding what exactly pain is or how it evolves. And I think that uh, several years ago, and even up into the into the present, you know, we treated pain with only one type of medication, which is a narcotic. And I think that uh, the science has kind of evolved behind it, and we realize that pain is multifactorial. An example I always give is, you know, you may you may stub your toe against the wall, and you feel that pain, and you can take a pain medication for it, or you could numb your toe up, you could take an anti-inflammatory medication, and you could reduce that amount of pain that your brain experiences. So we're learning that pain is more multifactorial than it is just one single tablet of narcotic to take care of it. So so give me the rundown. If I were to uh, need cervical spine surgery, we were doing this at a in a surgical center uh, because of, say, a disc in my neck, um, what would I go home with? So now you'd go home with, uh, you'd go home with a pain medication that's not a narcotic. Uh, in general, we use something called tramadol. So it would stimulate those same those same receptors in your brain, so your brain would think you're getting that kind of narcotic medication, but you're really not. You'd go home with the muscle relaxant because you'd have typically have spasms in your neck, um, and that's best treated with the muscle relaxant versus a pain medication. And you'd go home with an anti-inflammatory medication to reduce the inflammation that may occur after surgery. What are you using? What's your uh, end set of choice now? Well, typically we use um, meloxicam. It has probably the, a longer-acting kind of a 12 to 24-hour profile. So people, I tell my patients who either have surgery or even have back or neck problems and have not had surgery, that that medication is very safe to take. And if they're going to engage in something strenuous, to take the medication an hour or two beforehand, and then potentially they can take a tablet after six to eight hours after that activity. And that helps them go through the activity, helps them get to sleep at night, and they wake up the next day not feeling sore. We're visiting with Dr. Kern Singh, orthopedic, minimally invasive spine surgeon, Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. This is Sports Medicine Weekly. Steve Cashel, Dr. Brian Cole. Um, I want to ask uh, Dr. Singh this. What are pain expectations uh, patients should have undergoing spine surgery using contemporary anesthesia techniques? How much pain should they expect? Question. Yeah, how much pain should they expect? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. And, and actually, um, they should ex- actually expect not much pain afterwards. As, as, um, as you guys mentioned, we're doing these spine cases. That means disc replacements, artificial discs in your neck. It means cervical fusions. It means lumbar fusions in the outpatient environment. So um, you have incisional pain, um, which is kind of things that feel sore in your back and your neck. But uh, these patients, uh, postoperatively, they're up after an hour or two after surgery, and they're walking out the door of the surgery center four to six hours after their surgery. So uh, a lot of it's like preoperative education, 
But in general, people wake up comfortable, and they wake up comfortably enough that a couple hours later that they're walking out of the surgery center. So Dr. Cole, Dr. Singh, the whole key is you're trying to avoid the narcotics, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a definite uh, association with you know early narcotic use and future narcotic use. Kern, what are some of the statistics that you're aware of in that regard? Yeah, almost all almost all uh, potential people who become addicted have started on something something very light, so to speak. So Tylenol number three, hydrocodone, it's one in three, one in four patients get use that medication. It's not because they're going out seeking this. They're genuinely trying to treat their, their pain. And unfortunately, we as physicians have used just kind of one type of medication as a catch-all for every type of pain ailment. And each thing requires, you know, fine-tuning with whatever the condition may be. And, and hitting that pain with a specific medication that addresses that issue. Great stuff, Dr. Singh. We appreciate you joining us here and uh, for your expertise on Sports Medicine Weekly. Thank you, guys. All righty. It's Dr. Kern Singh from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. Time for a break here on Sports Medicine Weekly. We'll return. It's our staple of the show, our Ask the Doctor segment. Got some great questions for Dr. Cole this week, so stay with us. SportsMedicineWeekly.com, only on 670 The Score.